Do you guys use React? Some of you. Okay, so I am going to um, talk a little bit about React. The vast majority of this talk, despite the fact that I'm using React, it's built within the context of Create React App, the vast majority of it will apply anywhere, right? Because once you get into service workers and manifest and all that stuff, it doesn't matter what framework you're in. So, um, so it'll work for you. All right. I'm from here. I am not from here. Um, what's actually interesting is whenever I tell people I'm from the United States, they think of Los Angeles or New York City. I'm from neither of those places. Um, but actually, it's kind of fun. So we're in Portugal. Um, you know that. But uh, which is kind of fun because I grew up in Maine. So it's kind of neat to stand on the coast of Portugal just right down the street. Like I can look, if I look in the right direction, it's like that's where I grew up, right over there. I've never seen Maine from that side before, so it's interesting. Um, no, I just, right now, I live in Kansas City. So literally the farthest possible point I can get from the ocean um, or the two places everybody thinks of when they think of the United States, like I'm in the middle. Um, it's basically America's version of Germany. Like, think Germany's right in the middle. Same thing. Okay. That's enough about me. I'm John. For those of you who don't know, I'm a plural side author. I'm a consultant. I do all those things. If you want to talk about that later, let me know. Um, anybody use plural site? I always forget to do this. I'll remember to do this. Okay. If you don't use plural site, I have trial cards. Like, I can get you 30 days of all access to plural site. If you're interested in that afterwards, let me know. I will hand them out. I always forget to do that. So, okay. How many of you have seen this page while well, you've been here this last couple of days? Right? So this is the schedule for um, NDC Porto. And oh, I, haven't, I haven't tried too much while I've been here. I think things have been pretty good. How many of you, when trying to get to this page, have seen this page? Nobody? The Wi-Fi here has been great, hasn't it? So that kind of defeats the purpose of my entire talk, but that's okay. Imagine, if you will, we had bad Wi-Fi and we didn't want to see this page. We want to see this page, right? So that's the number one negative of a web app is it only works when you're online. Right, it seems obvious, but that's, that can be pretty detrimental, especially when you're in a um, poor Wi-Fi area or you know, your mobile network's not good. Uh, and so that's become much more of a problem, especially for an app like this. It's like, I just wanna see what the schedule is. I don't need to be online, I know all that information. So what's the alternative? We build a mobile app. How many of you have downloaded the NDC mobile application? Oh, that's pretty good, but some of you have not. Why haven't you? Like, if you didn't download it, why not? Because it's hard, right? You gotta go to the app store, you gotta click download, you gotta deal with permissions, it's just, it's painful. And so what you'll find is, especially for things like this, people just, you guys are fantastic because you followed instructions and you went and you downloaded it, but a lot of people are not gonna do that. They're not gonna go download the mobile app. So the problem is now you, you need something to fill the gap in between these two extremes. And so that's, that's where progressive web apps come in. So progressive web apps try and sit in the middle between a full-blown mobile app and a web app that doesn't work when, when it's offline. So the key um, aspect of a, of a progressive web app is it's gonna work. It's gonna work when you're offline, it's gonna work all the time. Reliable. A progressive web app is defined by three key things, and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk deeply about all three of these things. But the number one most important thing about a progressive web app is it works, always. No matter what my Wi-Fi connection is like, no matter, I can get to it, it works. It's fast. We're gonna talk a little bit about this too, because sometimes it's not that your, your Wi-Fi connection is gone, Sometimes if it's your Wi-Fi connection is just slow. And so you want things to work quickly. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means too. 
The last thing we're going to talk about is engaging. And so engaging means maybe something a little bit different. Um, yes, it's got to work because the reality is um, how many of you, when you are looking at a website, do you always look at a website here? For the vast majority of my life, I look at websites here, right? I'll work here, and then when I need to like go do something just on the web, I'll switch and I'll just use my phone. And this is what much of the world does now. So we need our websites or our web apps to work equally here as they do here. So that's part of the engaging part. And so this, has been, this concept's been around for a long time, right? So responsive web design. We want things to look differently. How many of you use Bootstrap? Kind of solves that problem a little bit for you. Um, the other side of engaging is what if for a website, and you guys have probably seen this a lot, when the website's not even open, what if I can send push notifications to your website, to your browser, just like I would to a mobile app? And that's the other part of the engaging piece, is I'm gonna send push notifications to your phone even when your browser's closed. So I'll show you how that happens too. All right, so let's look at this thing. I have built a React application. Now there's a lot of stuff here, and I'm not gonna talk about all the stuff, but there's a lot of stuff here. Basically, I just did create React app, schedule. Spun up a new thing, right? Um, if you do React, as a general rule, you, well, I don't care. You should be using create React app, right? How, how many of you use create React app? Like, if you don't use create React app, then you're, dealing with all kinds of configuration files and all the stuff that you just don't want to deal with. So I just did create React app, spun up a new thing. And this app does one thing. I'll actually just spin it up and then, um, doo -doo -doo. I'll spin it up and then I'll show you what it does. Boop. Okay, so basically, what this application does is it's the agenda. It's the NDC Porto agenda. That's all it is. Now, this is demo, so like none of, ignore all the stuff across the top. None of that works, right? It's just this page. And so what happens is, as I click between Thursday and Friday, I get the two different days. So let me show you how that works real quick for context, and then we'll kind of dig into it. So I have and app.js, and in my app.js, I have some days, Thursday and Friday, so I set my state, and I have selected as Thursday, which is day zero. Then when I click a different day, it just flips, and I do a get talks. And all get talks does is there's an axios.get, which is like a fetch. Do you, how many of you use axios? Right, so Axios is basically, it wraps fetch, right? So I just use it for all of my HTTP uh, calls. So Axios.get, I get the next day, .json, which are these two things over here, it's just my schedule. And then I display it. You may think going back to the network every time I click one of those two things is a little silly, but I have to do that, otherwise I can't demo the whole progressive web app thing for you, so that's why I do that. Okay. So that's my app. That's all there is to it. It's very simple. It's very simplistic. So here's inspect. So check this out. When I go to network and I reload, you see I go do a whole bunch of stuff. And then I click on Friday, and you'll see down at the bottom, if you're in the back, you may not see it, I'm going back for day one, day zero, day one. Back and forth, keep going. There is, in Chrome DevTools, this little button right here that takes you offline. So when I click offline, look at this. When I click Thursday, it doesn't work anymore, right? Click Friday, it doesn't work anymore. The thing's broken. So I have to I show you this, because we're gonna fix this here in just a second. If I refresh the page, what's gonna happen? What? 
the internet's not available. I get the dinosaur game. Uh, how many of you are aware that this is a game? Right, so I have a 13-year-old boy who has an Xbox, he has a PlayStation, he has a laptop, he has all of these things because he's spoil rotten. They're not his, they're the family's, but he's the only one that uses them. Um, and I have caught him sitting with his, the Wi-Fi turned off on his laptop playing the dinosaur game. It's like, really? So the, it's like Flappy Bird? Have you guys ever played Flappy Bird before? Um, right, so that's, I guess it's something to do when you're bored. Okay, so much of this talk is going to be centered around how to never see this screen again. So we want to get rid of this completely. Uh, we're also going to talk about Chrome DevTools. Now, how many of you, um, well, one, hopefully you use Chrome DevTools, because if you don't, you're missing out on quite a bit of power. There is also a lot of tabs to the right side of network. Very rarely, historically, have people ventured, you look at the console, you look at the elements, you kind of maybe go to network. Very rarely do people like venture past that because then it gets weird. Um, but we're going to spend a lot of time past that. Um, all right. So we set up the problem. Now let's actually talk progressive web apps. Uh, there is a tool, or there used to be a tool called Lighthouse. And what Lighthouse did is it would look at your application, it would analyze your application, tell you all the things you needed to do in order to make a progressive web app. Well, Lighthouse uh, became integrated into Chrome DevTools. And the only reason I tell you that little anecdote very shortly is because when I go to, Chrome, when I go to this Audits tab over here, there is a Lighthouse icon. The word Lighthouse never appears anywhere. It's not a, so everybody's like, what's the Lighthouse thing? That's why, because it used to be called Lighthouse, it's integrated in. What Audits does. If you haven't used this before, you should, you should use it for a lot of different reasons. It will analyze your website for performance, best practices, accessibility, SEO type things. It's, it does all this work for you. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take it back online first because if I don't, nothing will work. All right, I'm back. We're going to go to audit. I'm going to do a performance because fast was one of the things. And we're going to do a progressive web app audit. And then I'm going to run my audit. What's the first thing it did? It made it into a phone. Right? So it shrinks it down to make sure everything still lines up. And it's going to run through this audit process. And it's going to say, hey, performance is OK. It's 78. That's not fantastic. Progressive web app, 42. That is. Um, that's not a progressive web app. I mean, ultimately, to. So I want to talk about one thing first. Uh, remember, the f one of the first things, I'm going to flip back over for literally one slide. The f one of the first things we need to do for a progressive web app is make it fast. We want it to be snappy because if you're on a slow connection or you're on a no connection, if nothing happens, if you just sit and spin, people tune out and they go away. If you can get something to paint quickly, people will stay engaged. So it's better to paint something and then do nothing for a little while while you're gathering than it is to stay white until everything's ready and then pop up. So we want, we want the first paint to be really good. Well, luckily for us, in Chrome DevTools, we have this cool performance tool that will actually say, actually, most of this, the first paint is 1.8 seconds, speed index 2. Most of it's pretty good. We're 8.4 seconds to interactive. That's pretty horrendous, actually. Um, and it also gives this cool little trace to let you know exactly what happens when your website loads. And this is actually worth a little bit of time. We're not going to spend a, but Next time you go back to work, Monday, and analyze your website, go to this and just see what's happening. Because what you can actually see down here at the bottom is notice for the first 100 milliseconds, I've got a white screen. And then as things start to load, 
Now I have a blank screen. I've got no text, but at least I've got some colors. And then I can kind of move across. Look at that. Now I've got my agenda. I still have no data. And then as things load down here and as things render, I start to get, and you'll actually see right here, my Thursday and Friday are squished together. I'll see my CSS load, my CSS be parsed and applied, and now they split apart because that's my CSS is, is dealing with the placement of all my words, right? So I can walk through down here and see everything that's happening. Now, <coughs> the biggest problem for this website is time to interactive is horrible. First problem is I'm running local, right? And when I'm running local against development, I have not minified anything. And so I, watch this. So in Create React App, I can actually do um, npm run build. And what npm run build is going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to package everything up. It's going to minify it all. It's going to keep it all condensed. It's going to be awesome. Um, once that gets done, I can actually serve this page. And it serves it to a different port, which is super helpful because I don't have to kill my other one. Same thing. But notice, much faster. When I go to audit, I'm just going to do the performance audit here. When I go to audit, 98. So just the one minification piece is all it took to make. So if you're not minifying your bundles, like that should be compelling to you. It, minify your bundle, all of a sudden everything works. It works super great. Um, it, this, the other cool thing about this is it also tells you, look at this, opportunities. Eliminate render blocking resources. I have a full half second where my render isn't happening because of these things. So 900 milliseconds to load bootstrap.min.cs. Well, I'm not going to not load bootstrap, but you get the idea. Sometimes if these are non-critical CSS, you can stick them down at the bottom instead of up at the top, and they'll render later. Or you can delay rendering, all kinds of things like that. Okay, so I just want to take a minute and show you guys that. Um, let's go back to 3,000. Let's run this one more time. I'm going to not do performance, just progressive web app, and then let's look at what we get back. Okay, there we go. 42%. A whole bunch of stuff is broken. Let's talk about that. All right. So the first thing we're going to address is the big thing that we're going to address, which is does not respond with the 200 went offline, which on its face, if you're just walking in new, sounds absurd, right? We're offline. I want you to respond with a 200. Okay. Um, and the way you do that is because you have this thing down here called does not register a service worker. So let's talk about service workers. This is the meat of a progressive web app. And so I'll show you a whole bunch of stuff we'll get through. Who knows what a web worker is? All right, I've got a couple. I won't call on you, don't worry. Um, so, so a web worker is basically this thing, this piece of JavaScript, you can stand over to the side and let it process things separately on a separate thread than your main JavaScript thread. Because remember, JavaScript is single-threaded. You only have one thread to do work. So if you, if you have other things you can do that you don't want to tie that thread up, you can hand them off to a web worker and let the web worker deal with it. Okay, a service worker is not is similar to a web worker. The idea of a service worker is a service worker is kind of like a web worker in that it's going to sit to the side, but it sits in between your web browser and your remote server. And it manages all of the network connectivity between the web browser and the server. And so for the purposes of this conversation, we're just going to call it Jerry. Um, how many of you were in the keynote where Richard talked about Jerry? That's Jerry. Um, so for the purposes of this conversation, we're just going to call it. So, so basically what's going to happen for our application is I'm going to make that call to day0.js. 
And Jerry's going to sit over there and say, I already have a copy of day0.js. I don't need to go to the network. I can just hand it back. That's kind of awesome. And when Jerry first loads up, Jerry's going to go and he's going to pull the entire website into cache. And so that when the browser says, hey, give me localhost 3000, Jerry's going to say, I have it all already. I don't need to go to the network. I've already got it. I'm just going to send it back. And so that's the purpose of a web worker. So, or not a web worker, service worker. Do I have any security people in the room? Okay. This is normally where the security people kind of freak out a little bit. Because think about what you're doing. You're injecting a piece of code that's going to hijack all network traffic between the browser and the server. There's a word for that, right? So man in the middle attacks. And so uh, one of the requirements, and you'll see this, one of the requirements of a progressive web app is it must be served over HTTPS. You cannot serve it over HTTP because you don't, you can't, you don't want these things injected into your application because the vast majority of users have no idea this thing even exists. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay. So a service worker, um, the, the idea of a service worker is embedded into the browser itself. So there's a couple pieces of code you need to do in order to make a service worker work. The first thing is you need to go to, so Navigator is just a native JavaScript thing. There's nothing React specific about this. That's vanilla JavaScript, navigator.serviceworker.register. And that registers a service worker. It doesn't activate it, it doesn't install it, it just registers it. And the browser's gonna say, hey, go give me offline.js and install it. Now a service worker, your service worker code basically just responds to events. And that's all it does. And there's four events we're gonna talk about in this talk. So the first event, basically, so like I said, a service worker is just add event listener. There's a bunch of event listeners we're gonna add and when an event fires, the browser's gonna wake the service worker up and say, hey, run your install event. So what we're gonna do on install, so when install happens, we're gonna pre-cache the entire website. So what that's gonna look like is all of this stuff that it takes to execute my website, we're just gonna go out and we're gonna pull it in. And I'll show you this here in just a second. And you'll actually see it happen in our network window. The second event that you guys are going to care about is fetch. So what fetch is going to do is when, when fetch happens, so when I do my axios.get, that fires a fetch event. And so the browser is going to wake up the service worker and say, hey, fetch event just happened. And what's going to ha what it's going to do is event.respond with from cache. And it's just going to send back the cached thing. And so basically what this code is, don't worry about the code so much, I'm going to give you a little cheater guide that's going to do a lot of this stuff for you. So don't, don't worry about it too much. But what this is going to do is basically say, open this thing called caches, which is a service worker thing. It's basically just a local cache that the service worker has access to. And it's going to say, hey, if this request is in my cache, return it. Otherwise, I'm going to throw an error, which is great. All right, so let's look at this in practice so you guys can see it work. All right, now I am going to cheat. I'm just telling you now. Because the last thing in the world you guys want to do is sit and watch me write code. So I'm going to magically. Julia Child, is Julia Child a thing in Portugal? No. Okay, Julia Child was a famous cooking show host. And so what Julia Child would do is she would do some stuff and then she'd walk over to the oven and like pull the finished one out of the oven and set it down, right? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a git next. Magically, I have a service worker. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what the service worker is in the context of React and then we'll go. So in my index.js, index.js in React is the, the key. It governs the whole thing. It tells everything what to do. You'll notice I have this input star as service worker from dot service worker. Excellent. That's the only line of code that matters there. Let's look at service worker. Okay. 
if you have used Create React App before, in the Create React App service worker, there's gonna be a whole bunch of code in here. The first thing you wanna do is just delete it because it's bogus, you don't need that. We're gonna do our own because it's better that way. Um, and I'm just gonna do, there's my navigator, remember that one line of code, and that's it. You'll notice I don't have scope on there because I don't care about it for the context of this demo, but um, offline.js, and then offline.js, is all, is, there's my install event right there. There's my fetch event. All the rest of this is stuff you've already seen. Okay, let's go look at this. All right, because it, were, it already happened. Like I was showing you this stuff and as soon as I did it, get next, it like happened. So let's look at what just happened. Notice all of this looks the same. I went, I got a 200 index, all that happened because the last thing that happens is offline.js gets pulled. It's actually not even on the screen yet. Offline.js is the last thing that happened. Notice, as soon as offline.js comes up, you see all this stuff with this little gear icon. What the little gear icon means is this, all the rest of this network traffic, localhost, index, bundle, bootstrap min, all of this stuff, is all being pulled by the service worker into cache. And you actually see that happen, it's denoted by having this little asterisk thing here. Now if I go and I click on Friday, notice I'm, I'm still going to the network, which is weird. And so part of what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the oddness that happens. Um, so the application tab. We talked about the audit tab. Let's look at the application tab for just a second. So the application tab tells you a couple of things. You've got your manifest, which we haven't talked about yet. We'll get to that in just a minute. Then we've got our service workers. And you'll see I have a service worker. It's up, it's running, it's active. It's not working, but it will be. Don't worry, I like, was expecting it to not work. Like this isn't where the demo breaks. That comes later. Um, and then down here, one other thing that's cool on this application tab is look at all this stuff that I have. I have all my storage, my session storage, my cookies, all of that stuff is accessible here. So this tab isn't just about, about progressive web apps and service workers. This tab gives you all the information about your whole site. But what you'll see down here is my cache only, Cache only was the name of our cache. So in our code, notice I called the cache cache only because that's what we're doing right now. We're only serving from cache. And so you can see all the stuff that was cached. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna refresh. Okay, now I'm actually serving from cache. And you know I'm serving from cache because a couple of things broke and my icon broke up here because I didn't cache that stuff. But now, if I clear, and I click Friday, notice, if you're in the back, you may not see this, but over here on size, I have from service worker. So my day one that got pulled is coming from my service worker now. It didn't come from the network. There was no network traffic happening now as I click these two things. And I, I know that because if I click offline, remember when I clicked offline before and everything broke and you're like, well, that's obvious? Well, I had to do that to prove to you that now this is working. Now, I can still go back and forth between Thursday and Friday despite when I'm offline. What's gonna happen when I hit refresh? The whole thing still works. So now I have a fully functional website that's working even when I'm offline, which is way more impressive than you all are giving me the impression that it is, but that's okay. I did set it up quite a bit. We talked about it for a while before we got there. If I had just shown it right off the bat, you'd probably be more impressed, but that's cool. Um, there's a fundamental flaw with this that you may have already picked up on because I am only serving from cache. So that's gonna cause a problem here in just a second because what happens 
when, if I go to day zero.json, and Richard's sick. Richard's not coming in today, so I'm going to beat this joke to death and, call, and say Jerry is going to speak in Richard's place. Um, what's going to happen when I click, I'm going to save this, I'm going to flip over, and I click Friday, I'm going to click Thursday, I still see Richard Campbell because I'm offline. I'm going to go back online, I'm going to click Friday, I'm going to click Thursday, I still see Richard Campbell. Why don't I see Jerry? I'm still serving it from cash. So realistically, that's not really what I want to do, right? In theory, it makes sense. Let's just cache everything and just serve from cash. But when things change, that doesn't work. So we're going to add one more piece to this that's going to deal with a lot of that stuff for us. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to come back here. I'm going to undo this. Oh, wait. Before I do that, hold on. I want to show you one more thing because this, there's one more little freaky thing. What happens if I have a bug in my service worker? Everything, everything breaks. Um, it's okay, because what's going to happen, I'll come back over to, applica uh, to application and we'll look at service workers. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to change my service worker. So let's go to my service worker, my offline.js, and let's change this to NDC. So now I've changed my service worker. What's going to happen? So what's going to happen is the website's going to load, and then it's going to check to see if offline.js is available and if it's different. It's going to do a, a byte compare, and if it's different, it's going to load it. If it's not different, it won't. So let me save this, flip back over here, refresh my page, Ah, I have my old service worker is still activated and running. You'll see my new service worker is waiting to activate. It went through a process. It happened fast, so you probably didn't see it, but it said installing the new one, waiting to activate. Now, because we installed it, you'll see down here at the bottom, I now have an NDC cache because on install, I go and cache everything. Another event that fires that we're not using but we could use is on acti activate. We could do the pre-cache on activate and not cache yet. But this is going to sit here in waiting to activate until everything that has been served by the previous service worker is no longer active. So that's painful, and I don't want to close the browser and do all of that stuff. So I'm just going to click skip waiting. There we go. And now it's working. Um, and now everything's served from Jerry. Okay. So let's change this a little bit. So now I've got to you know, undo this, discard changes, undo that one, discard changes. Excellent. Get next. Okay. Now this one's called network first. So let me show you what the difference is. And then I'll show you what's happening. If I go to offline.js, still says cache only because I didn't change it. But look at what fetch does. What fetch does now is I go to the network, so from network. And then I do a catch. So I'm going to try the network, and if that fails, then I'm going to go pull it from cache. That sounds more realistic like what we want to do, right? Um, so the way that works is let's come back over here to the browser. Let's refresh. Notice, I'll skip waiting. All right, so now if I come over to network and I scroll this down and I clear my network out, if I click Friday, Thursday, Friday, notice it still says from service worker, but it also goes and pulls it. So like day one has two entries now. So it pulled day one from the service worker, but notice the little gear icon says that the service worker also went and pulled day one from the network. 
So that means when I click on Thursday, I see Richard Campbell. When I'm offline, it still works. Notice it's failing, I get the reds and then serve. But if I come over to my browser and I go to day zero and I change Richard to Jerry again, and I click Thursday, it still says Richard, why? Because I'm still offline. If I go back online, now it says Jerry. Okay. That's a lot. There's a lot of words there and a lot of code. So we're gonna cheat because that's what a good developer does, right? Um, you have two options, right? The first option is you go to Stack Overflow and you say, help me write a service worker, um, which is a bad idea. Uh, who uses Stack Overflow? If you don't raise your hand, you're lying. Um, uh, so the general rule with Stack Overflow, is everybody aware of this? The checkmarked answer is never the right answer. It's always the one right below it. And it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter where in the world I am, whether I'm in America, Europe, Africa, wherever, everybody laughs at that joke because we all fight the same battles, right? And that battle is, um, I wish we could vote for the check mark, but we can't, and that's a flaw in um, Stack Overflow. So here, the other way we're gonna cheat is there is a website called servicework.rs. If you walk away with nothing from this talk, which is highly likely, walk away with this. This website gives you everything you need to build service workers. And let me tell you a little bit. Now, this is Mozilla. So they know something about the web, a little bit. Um, and look at all this stuff they have. So, hey, look, network or cache, cache only, cache and update, cache, update, and refresh. If you want to cache and update, Look, here's your index.js, here's your server, and here's your service worker. This is the code for your service worker with explanations on why to build out your whole service worker. And these things get complicated. So catch, update, and refresh. Remember what was the number one most important thing? Fast. You, it's, it's gonna, not the number, the first thing I mentioned. How about that? The first thing, it has to be fast. So what if, when I click on Thursday, I serve the cache thing back, then I go to the network, I pull the new data from the network, and then I update the screen. That's a little bit more compelling, right? There's your code that does that. So that's how that'll work. So this is important, and you wanna understand this part of it. Okay. That's service workers, which is the, the core, the meat of a progressive web app. But that covers the work offline part. There's another piece to this. Um, I didn't run my, take my word for it because I'm not going to go run the, I'm not going to make you sit through another audit. Does not reg register a manifest, user will not be prompted to install the web app. So when you go to the website, I want you to get a little pop-up that says install to my desktop. That's kind of cool. Uh, I don't have to go to the, web the, to the app store anymore. I can just click a button and have it load. All right, so let's talk about the manifest file. Okay, here's another thing that's interesting. So um, who knows what a manifest is? Not in co this context, just in the word context. Okay, um, what's the Portuguese word for manifest? Manifest. Manifest. Oh, okay. Um, which is also kind of funny because, again, no matter where I am in the world, it's basically just manifest. Um, so we all, I speak a little tiny speck of Portuguese. Um, I know that word, manifesto. Um, okay. So... <laughs> And that was easy. Okay, so, and agua, is that right? Or do I have a horrible American accent? Agua, is that right? It's decent? It's decent, okay. That's fair. I appreciate that. You're being nice. Um, okay, so, it's also a very simple word. So, uh, all right. Manifest. So, what is a manifest? Think about it, not in context of this, but in context of, like, shipping, right? So you're a coastal city. What is a manifest file? Somebody tell me. Or a, man, a manifest. 
it kind of, it describes like a shipment. It gives you everything that's in the shipment and the details around the shipment. It just kind of, the to address and all of that kind of stuff. This is the same thing. All a manifest file is, it's a JSON file that describes the web page as if it were an application. The important things like, what's the icon? What's the start URL? What are the main colors of the thing? That kind of stuff gets deposited into this thing called a manifest file, and we just link it, just like a style sheet or something. We just pull in a manifest just like this, and it's gonna look like this. So the name of our app is event schedule. We have a theme color, we have a display type, a scope, because it could just, you know, it could be a, a sub part of your application, right? It doesn't have to be the whole thing. And then a list of icons. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you access to your, uh, or install your application. So. Uh, okay, back over here, let's do our next manifest. Okay, so first things first, right here, I have a link to a manifest file. That's all it is. And then I have a manifest file. It's not complicated, it's not even hard. That's all there is to it. Um, but what that's gonna do is when I come back over to my web page and I go to my application and I go to manifest, it's gonna be empty because updating the manifest didn't force my browser to refresh, so I'm gonna refresh. Now I have a manifest file. And it's all these same things, right? So I've got my name, I've got my event, I've got my icons, all that stuff. And I have this little button right here called add to home screen. Just to prove something, I'm gonna come here. Apps, notice, I've got Postman, I've got a couple other things, but I don't have my event schedule. So I'm gonna to go to event, I'm gonna click add to home screen, and I get this little pop-up. Add this site to your shelf to use it at any time. I'm gonna click add, I'm gonna click create, and now, in my little shelf, I have event schedule. So it has installed it as an app. Now that's not really very cool, actually. But what potentially is cool is this. Because I, bear with me. Take out your phone and go to this address bit.ly NDC Porto. Because the only way I can properly express to you some of the things about this is to have everybody experience what's happening here. So when you go to this website, it's just exactly the same thing we've been looking at. So now on your phone, you have a progressive web app that has the schedule for the rest of the day. You're welcome. So, um, but, but, how many of you got a install to your homepage? I, so those of you who did not, notice there are people with their hands up. And I will tell you one thing about the people with their hands up and one thing about the people with their hands down. The people with the hands up are most likely Android users, right? The people with their hands down are Apple users. No, what do you have? Interesting. Firefox on Android, <sighs> okay. Um, right, so if you're an Apple user, do me a favor, go to share, save to home screen, which is not an intuitive place to put the share button, or the add to home page button. Why would you put it under, so that should work for you. And then you can play around with this a little bit. You can turn off mobile data, you'll see that the thing still works, you can launch it from your desktop, all of that stuff works. Who, who from the Apple got the share add to home page? Did that work? Yes, it worked, okay. Not impressed at all, are you? Um, but that's okay. Um, okay, 
So, so just to give you a little bit, so the reason why I do that for the whole room is you kind of see where the state of progressive web apps are, right? He used Firefox, doesn't work, right? Android Chrome users, which, you know, are the good people, it worked, it was fine. The Apple users had to go through an extra hoop in order to get it to work. And some of you probably just won't get it to work at all on your phone, Microsoft especially. If you're on a Microsoft device, it will not work. Not because Microsoft devices are bad, but because they actively have refused to implement that feature. Why, let me think about this for just a second, why would Apple and Microsoft be reluctant to allow you to intuitively install an app from the browser? Money. Money. You're circumventing the app store, therefore they're not getting their revenue. That's exactly right. Um, what you are starting to see, Google has already done this, is the Play Store will actually allow you to serve progressive web apps through the app store. And Apple will not be far behind. So pretty soon, you just have to build your progressive web app and you can serve that through the app store. But if you're going to serve it through the app store, why not just write an app? So that's a whole different conversation. But, okay. Yep. So we've installed. We've served offline. We've got our manifest thing working. I'm going to demo for you. This is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more to it, and we only have like 10 minutes. So I'm going to demo for you push notifications. Um, I'm not going to like walk through it as deeply as I have because you can go out to that service worker page, but I want you just to see it work and what the pieces are. Um, so... I'm going to kill this, boom, and I'm going to, okay. So, <coughs> that was very loud. Okay, sorry. I have a back end, and I'll talk to you about the back end here in just a second, but let's look at the front end. Um, in this front end, if I go to my offline.js, this is different. I'm not caching at all on this one. I have another event, two other events that I want to talk to you about. The first, it navigated away. Um, but while I'm here, let's, um, let's clean this up a little bit because notice, there we go. Um, I still had the cache one and so that wouldn't, none of it would work and Boom, okay. So let's go back over here. Now I have another event called push. And what that push event is gonna do is it's going to serve up the push notification. So, so when a push notification happens, the browser is gonna wake up the service worker and say, fire the push notification. And it's gonna fire that. The next one is notification click. So what notification click does so you click on a notification, we're gonna launch our website. Just remember that. Again, all this code's gonna be available over on the service worker thing, so don't worry about the code as much as like the... Okay, the other thing I wanna show you is this. Remember serviceworker.js was like just this one line of code before? Well, all of the meat of a push notification is done outside of your service worker. You've got to register all this stuff. And so, just very quick, I have pushmanager.getsubscription. What pushmanager.getsubscription is going to do? You've seen this before. Localhost 3000 would like to you to enable push notifications. Click OK or, or no to enable push. How many of you have seen that at least one time on the internet? How many of you click yes by default? Probably none of you, right? Because it's annoying and we don't want to do that. Um, but in this case, we do. Because if, a, if, a, if the schedule changes and you're going to go to you know, room four, you get a push notification that says, hey, the schedule is different. You don't want to go to that session anymore. You want to know about that. Um, the way push notifications work is there's all kinds of security around them. So 
There's a thing called a public key. You've got to go out to the server. You've got to pull a public key. You get the key. You exchange keys. And then you subscribe. So when you load this web page, this little piece of code is going to happen that's going to, call, that's going to be subscribe, and then I'm going to actually post to register. And what that post to register is going to do is send the subscription. And I'll show you what a subscription looks like. Because all this endpoint does, and actually you, you'll see it back behind it, all that endpoint does on my back end is just do a console.log. So that's it. Um, you'll notice, and I will, this code will be on, is on GitHub, so you can just go pull it. I'm going to walk you through the little pieces of it. Okay, send notification or register. Notice when they call register, I just print it out. So let's look at this in Postman. That is very small. I will make that bigger. Hold on. Okay. All a push notification subscription is, is an endpoint. Notice, googleapis.com slash fcm slash send slash a whole bunch of stuff. That I'm not, but because it, it's unique, like it's global unique, it's got to be a big, long, weird string. Then I have some keys. I've got my public key, that vapid key. That, um, so I have to have that. And then I have a message. And that message says, Jerry is filling in for Richard. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click send, and everything's going to break because it always does. Um, but hold on. Don't freak out. It'll be fine. Because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Clear my storage. We didn't talk about this. The last thing on the application tab is clear storage. All of this stuff, my service workers, my cache, all of that stuff, I'm going to clear out and get rid of. So let's just clear that out. Let's click refresh. There we go. I got a new subscription with a different endpoint. You would never know it's a different endpoint because you're not going to read the big long thing. I'm going to click send. And it said it did it, but it didn't. That's less than awesome. Did it, it didn't show up over there. It's showing up off my screen. These things are very cool right up until the one time they don't work. Um, okay, we're going to do this one more time, and if it doesn't work, you're just going to have to believe me that it works, because I don't have time to fix it. Um, sorry. Okay, keynote, everything's there. If we go to, uh, to application. I've got my service worker, it's there. If I click offline, notice, there's my push event, all of that. Come back here, copy my new subscription, paste, V, send, And of course, no, that doesn't work. So anyway, other than that, any questions from the crew? Other than why didn't that last little demo work? Because I'll have an answer for you in like three minutes, but you don't want to wait for that. So um, thoughts, questions, yes? No, so that's the most important part of the whole thing. When I close my tab, when I close my browser, 
that service worker is still working. And it's going to sit there, and it's going to do, uh, it's going to wake up, and it's going to do everything, which is the important thing for the push notifications that are not working. Um, but yeah, so, so the idea is that's going to work no matter what. So if I close the browser, and then that service worker sits there. Now, it doesn't do anything. It's not going to do anything until... Um, something happens that makes the browser wake up and execute my service worker. But until that happens, uh, it's, it'll, it's active, but it's not consuming any resources, if that makes sense. Other questions? Yep. So, no, it, it fetches them again from the network. And so what, what you see, and we looked at this um, a little earlier, so you'll see all of the assets come down, and the last thing that comes down is offline JS. And then when, as soon as offline JS comes down, it goes and pulls everything again. Because until that service worker is installed, it's not managing anything. And so it has no awareness of anything else that's gone on around it until it's installed then it will go. So we have to be somewhat careful with, uh, with the amount of traffic that's going to generate for you? Well, yes, um, but it also happens completely in the background. So, so it's not that traffic doesn't impact the user's experience in the browser at all because it's, it's operating in a separate thread over in the service worker thread. But yes, I mean, don't... I'll put it this way. If you're Amazon.com, don't create a service worker that caches every request that people make, and like then you have all of Amazon cached in the browser. Like, don't do that. That's, that's not going to work for you. Um, okay, excellent. Any other questions? Okay, so... In Internet Explorer 9, or something older, um, the service worker doesn't exist. Like, so if I come back over to here, and I go to, um, that's the back end. If I go to my offline.js, what I don't have that I should, serviceworker.js, is I should have... That's my problem, but it's too late. I figured it out, but it doesn't matter because I'm over time and Rob's speaking next. Okay, um, because this is still running, and it's the other one. Okay, anyway, sorry, beside the point. Um, notice here I say navigator.serviceworker.register offline. If navigator, if service worker doesn't exist in navigator, I can't install the service worker. So what you would do is you'd wrap this in an if statement. If you have to support IE9, you just say, hey, if... I have service worker, do all the service worker stuff. If I don't, don't. And then that page in IE9 continues to function like normal. It just doesn't have any of the offline capabilities or the push notifications or anything like that, if that makes sense. Right, which is why we use Transpilers, even though I hate that phrase, Babel um, is a compiler. First of all, it's not a transpiler, but um, it, yeah. So yes, make sure that you're you're doing all that. Yep. Um, okay. That that was my whole problem. Okay. Because notice I hit Command C. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Thank you guys very much for your time. Hopefully you have a great rest of your conference. Thanks for letting me hang out.